Beis Af is Daf Lamed Vav. Hasam Tanai. The Gemara presents the following suffer based on a Mishnah at the end of the Sech, the Shabbos Kuf Chav Vav. The Mishnah says that on Shabbos, for the sake of Pinui, you have, if you recall from yesterday, a storage house, and you want to clear it out so that the base Medrash boys could sit there or you could invite guests, and you're allowed to take out four or even five large kupos of straw. These are barrels or or boxes or baskets full of straw and other kinds of grains. Avalo es ha'otzar. What does that mean, avalo es ha'otzar? Omar Shmuel, Shmuel says, my, what does it mean, avalo es ha'otzar? Avalo yigmar es ha'otzar kulo, meaning you can take out as many kuputs as you want that are piled up on top of one on top of the other, but make sure that you don't go all the way down to the floor and expose the floor. Dilma osi la gumos. So we're now on Daflam and Vavam and Aleph on the third line. Dilma osi la gumos. And what we're worried about here is that if he clears out the storage house all the way straight down to the floor, exposing the floor, the floors in those days were not like our stone floors, they had cracks and crevices. And he might be tempted inadvertently without even thinking to flatten the ground. And if he flattens the ground to remove those crevices and those mounds, then he will violate Malecha's bone. And that's called lo yigmar es ha'otzar kulo. He should not completely vacate all of the barrels and the baskets that are stored in this otzar. And now the Gemara presents the following suffix. We move from the Mishnah of Avoloas HaOtzar in Mesech the Shabbos back to our Mishnah here in Mesech the Beitza. And our Mishnah is dealing with a different question. He has fruits on the roof and it's going to, pour, it's going to be pouring rain and he wants to protect the fruits from spoilage. And the Mishnah allows him to take all the fruits and send them down the Aruba, that skylight, that passageway on top, and bring it down to the floor below, which will be protected from the rains. What about the case where he's clearing out the fruits on his roof? Will we have the same restriction that we had in the Mishnah Shabbos, namely, that we're not going to permit him to clear out all the fruits right down to the bare bones roof of the, of the Gag. Because once again, we have to worry about the fact that if he exposes the floor of, in this case, the roof, he may be tempted to be mashvigumos, to flatten it out and violate Melech's bone. And here's the two stadim of the suffering. Number one, Hasam Hu the Asur Mishum de Chamir. Perhaps we have to be very careful in the case of Shabbos not to allow him to empty out and, and make vacant the entire Otsar, his whole storage house, because the Chumrah of Shabbos and the Easter Shabbos is a Chiv Skila, And we have to be very careful and set up our chaka, lest he come to be mashva gumos and violate a malacha de oraisa of Shabbos hachamura. Of Yontif, the kill, we could be more mekil with regard to Yontif. Yontif could never generate skila. The worst punishment for violating Yontif is malchus. Shaper dummy. We could be more laid back about it. We don't have to be chochech and afraid that maybe he'll come to be mash for gumos. Oh, Dilma. Here's the other side of the Gemara Suffolk. Awesome. The Ika Beetle Base Medrish, Amrit Lo, Hocha the Leka Beetle Base Medrish, Lo Kolchkin. In the case of Shabbos, there's more of a pressing reason to be lenient. And yet the Mishnah prohibits it. And that pressing re- reason is called Bito Besa Medrash. We have a number of people 
who need a place to sit while they're studying Torah, and we want to clear out the Otsar. And yet, despite the significance and the push, the impetus of Bittu Beis Medrash, we were still machmir, and the Rabbanon did not allow clearing out the Otsar. How much more so in the case of Yontif, where again, he wants to protect his fruits from the rains, but there's no issue or element of Bittu Beis Medrash, certainly we should be more machmir and we should prohibit it. Many of the Mepharshim are bothered by the Gemara's second side. The Gemara says, the lack of bittel based Medjish. Why did the Gemara use a different logic of Kolchkin, a logic that we've encountered on the previous Amud, and that is because Yontif is relatively kal, it's lenient compared to Shabbos, people might be a little bit mezalzel in Yontif. Why did the Gemara mention that? And here, the Pnei Yoshua, who lived about, oh, it's already close to three centuries ago, he has a major breakthrough. He wants to say that the only time we say is either with regard to Muktza, which is the Gemara at the beginning of the Sech, the base called Nolad, or the case of Tircha Yisera, when there's a great deal of effort, people might be a little bit more laid back about young people. But when we're talking about a malacha, and in this case, malachas bonef is mashvegumos, then certainly no one would think of being mezalzo and yontif. Now the Gemara presents another suffer. And by the way, we're piling up all these fakers at the end of the day. The Gemara's going to blibe. I shouldn't uh, let the cat out of the bag. We'll take them. Pachatanan, in our Mishnah here, on Daflam at Hayam at Beis and Beitza, mashilin peres derech haruba beyontif. We're only allowed to lower the peros from the gag, from the roof on Yontif, through this skylight. The Omer of Nachman, of Nachman says, what happens if you don't have a skylight, but you have a neighbor whose gag, whose roof is exactly adjacent to yours, is contiguous to your roof? Are you allowed to take your peros to protect them from the rains? bring them over to the Gag, that side of the roof that is your friends, your neighbors, and use his skylight because he has an Aruba, whereas you don't. Rav Nachman says, only be also a Gag. They were only lenient to push the fruits down through the skylight on that roof. Av only Gag le Gag, but from one roof to another roof, that they don't allow low. Bitanya nami hofi, we have a brisa to support this chumra, this restriction of Rav Nachman. You have two flat roofs that are absolutely contiguous. And nevertheless, they were not lenient to allow you to take fruits from one gag, send it down the aruba of another gag in order to protect them. Hasomai. What about on Shabbos? When we said that you're allowed to be mafana, you're allowed to clear out an otzar and take away all those uh, baskets and barrels because of the orchim that are coming or because of the base medrash to allow the Talmudim to sit there and hear the shear from the Rebbe, what's the din? Would we allow you to take from one gag to the other? Hachahudi asur mishum yontif to kill the Asil Zuzui Bay. We have to be more machna regarding Tircha. Again, I'm using the Pnei Yoshua's logic. If you go to Tircha, you have to be very strict on Yantiv because people might be laid back about Yantiv. After all, they're cooking, Ochel Nefesh is Muta, they'll be in general Mizalzal and do all sorts of, exert themselves with all sorts of forms of non malacha labor and sweat and toil on Yantiv. So we were very careful and we would not allow him to send it down to the Aruba in the next God. No one is suspect of being mezalzel in Shabbos. And we know that Shabbos is a day of rest. People will not take advantage of that day and get involved in heavy-duty labor. Is Shabbat dummy? Then we could allow him to take out what he needs from this God for the sake of the next God. Oh, Dilma, should we say no? Even though we have a really pressing mitigating circumstance, 
to be permissible in the case of Yontif because he's going to lose his fruits and he's going to suffer a financial loss of some significant amount. And we have a principle at Torah Chasa, Rahmana Chasa, Mamona Shal Yisrael. And nevertheless, we prohibit using the next God, Chasam, in the case of Shabbos, where again, we may have reasons why we want to be Mafana the outside, but nevertheless, there's no Leka Hefseid Mamon, there's no Hefseid of Peros, he's not losing anything. Is Lokoshke now, which more so we have to be Machmir in the case of Shabbos. Now the Gemara introduces another subject. Hacha Tanya here in our Brisa with regard to taking fruits from the Gag down on Yontif because of the rains. Lo Yishal Shalem Bechevel Bechalonos. You have a roof that's surrounded by Mechitos and there are windows in the Mechitos. You are not permitted to lift up your fruits, carry them over to the window and send them through the open window down to the floor below, because that's too much of a tirchah. We're only going to allow you to, in a sense, just lower the fruit, but not to raise them in order to put them through the window. And that's a chumrah in Yantif with regard to Peros. Lo yardim derechal salamos. And not only that, if you would, you would need to climb down ladders, descend the ladders in order to bring the Peros from the top roof, all the way down, because you don't have an Aruba. We just said, if you don't have an Aruba, you can't use Chalonos. Now we're saying, if you don't have an Aruba, you're not allowed to use Sulamos. You can't even physically carry them down from the top to the bottom, because that, again, in, involves an extra Tirch. Also, my, what's it been in Shabbos with regard to the Kupos? It would be Mafana the Otsar and take out the Kupos. Should we say that in Shabbos we are more lenient and we could allow being mefana derech hachalonos. Why? Because hacha, in our case, beyond the hudi aser, the lack of bittel beis hamedrash, there's no bittel beis hamedrash, which is a pressing reason and a, and a motivating force to be to be lenient. So we don't have that leniency, and therefore we're machmir. Avol b'shabbos dika bittel beis hamedrash. In the case of Shabbos, we don't have a place for the talmidim to sit, and if now the only way we can find Room for them is by being mefana the otzar derech halonos or derech sulamos. We should be lenient. Oh, Dilma, maybe not. Let's introduce the following talvachomer. If in the case of peros on yontif, where the rains are going to fall down and ruin, and you'll suffer financial loss, nevertheless, we were machmer. We wouldn't allow you except through an aruba, but not through halonos, nor with sulamos. Is here, Hosab, in the case of Shabbos, the Leka have said Peros. We're not dealing with any sort of financial laws. Lo Kolshkin, how much more so do we have to be Ma? And the Gemara concludes with regard to all these different Sveikos, Teku. Do we show them want to know what do we do, Allah Maisa, in these cases of Teku? The Balamar says that in all cases of Teku, we should be mashva the din of pinoy peros beyondiv to the din of pinoy kupos b'shabs. We should have an automatic equation between the two, and therefore we should always be mach. But the rivet disagrees, and he differentiates between one suffix and another suffix. Ayn shom. The Mishnah says umachasim es peros. When you have a crevice, a crack in the roof, and the rainwater. Is coming down through those cracks, seeping down. And now you have vessels that will be ruined by the rain. Then we are allowed to cover all of those vessels, all of those peros, whatever might be affected by the laf. The laf means the water that is seeping through the holes in the roof. Amar Ula. We're going to have now a machlokis between Ula and Rabbi Yitzchak. What's the case? Avera, not Avera with an eye in the base, Avera de Livne. He's got bricks that are stacked up, one on top of the other. It's not a binion because there's no tit, there's no concrete that connects one brick with the, next, the top brick on top of it. 
And Ula says, I feel even in this case, you're allowed to take whatever you need as a kisui, whatever kind of cloth or beged that you need, a sheet perhaps to cover over these levenos, these bricks, and you're allowed to do this. What's the Kiddush here of Ula? I might think that if you want to cover peros, because they might get ruined from the dilaf, that's okay because you're covering something that in it itself is not mukt. But in the case of Levenos, in the case of Avira de Livni, where these bricks are designated for building purposes, and therefore they certainly are mukta, we're not going to allow you to move something for the sake of mukt. And that's in fact the other shita that descends and argues Luchumra against Ula. That's Rabbi Yitzhak Omar. Peros, Hara Uyim, we're only allowing you to cover Peros because Peros are Uyim La'achila, and therefore the Mutu Betilto. There's no Dinah Muktz on Peros. But in the case of something like Levenim, like bricks, which are by definition Asr Betilto, they are Muktza, then you're not allowed to be metaltil something for the sake of Muktza. The Azda Rab Yitzchak Litamei, Rab Yitzchak is just applying his general rule. Yom Rab Yitzchak ain't kli nital el itzarach and nital b'shav. You're only allowed to move X for the sake of Y if Y itself is muta betilt. But you would not be allowed to move to be metaltil X for the sake of Y if Y itself is mukta. And therefore, these Levenos, if you want to cover them, you are not allowed to do that on Shabbos because ein klinital el ledovranito. And now for the next part of our sugi, of our learning today, we're going to analyze various sources and see if we can prove ula, lakula, or perhaps bring support to Rabbi Yitzchak, lechumra, t'nan. Our mission seems to be the first source to to approach. The Mishnah says that you're allowed to cover peros. Why did the Mishnah tell me a bigger chidich? You're even allowed to cover levenim. Peros in, avera de livne, lo. This is against Ula. This is a riot to support Rabbi Yitzchak that the Mishnah would only allow moving a kisui in order to cover peros, which themselves are not mukta, but had it been avira delivne, which is mukta, we would not allow you to cover it. Our answer is no. To defend Ula, who had din dafilu avira delivne. In truth, you're allowed to be machasa, you're allowed to cover avira delivne if you're afraid of dlaf, that they might get ruined by the waters. Ah, you'll ask me, so why does he mention peros? And here we apply a methodology called Aidi de Toneresha Tani Seifa, which means that in every Brisa, and for that matter in every Mishnah, there's a certain element of symmetry between the beginning and the end. Aidi de Toneresha, since in the Resha, the Mishnah says Machilin Peros, because the case in the Mishnah could only be Peros. That's a Dovra Metal tale. So you need a Dovra Metal tale to send it through the Aruba. And we were not there moving in this downward direction, something which in itself is not mukta. Is therefore Tony Safer with regard to the question of moving something for the benefit of something else that's called Kisui? Is Tony Safer Nami Mechasidus Aperos? The word Peros is Lavdafka. It would even refer to, to Avira Delivni, but he mentions Peros in order to maintain the integrity and the symmetry of this price, of this mission. So now the Gemara tries to ask another cash and raise another objection against the from a Mishnah, Tanan, the end of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah at the end says, V'chein kade yayin, v'chein kade shemen, <clears throat> that in the case of Dalaf, you're allowed to cover barrels of wine or barrels of oil. And it seems to be, that the Mishnah is limiting this leniency to the case of oil or wine, which themselves are a Dovra Metalto, the Mutabitilto. And here you can't give the answer that I need the Tani Resha Tani Seifa, because the Tana is writing Kade 
Yayin and Kadi Shemen Agav the Agav the Ratio that that you can't say because the Mishnah here did not address anything similar to Kadi Yayin Kadi Shemen, meaning if you're talking about Mashilin Peros or Machasin Peros, then you're talking about the same identical object, and that's called Peros. So you have the idea of the Tani. But now we're introducing a whole new object into the equation. The item here is Kadi Yayin Kadi Shemen. There's no idea of the Tani. And yet the Mishnah only allows you to cover Kadayayin and Kaday Shemen. Apparently, it would prohibit covering Avir Delivni. And that's a cash on Ula. And the Gemara defends Ula with the following answer. What kind of Yayin and Shemen are we talking about? We're talking about Tevel. Tevel, since you cannot be Mafris, Trumas, and Maestris on Shabbos, therefore, that's the status of. Mukt, it's also the tilt. <laughs> now, this, by the way, contradicts a Gemara that we had yesterday, the day before yesterday, that Tevel Muchanu Eitzel Shabbos. Yeah, the Rishonim are going to try to work that all out. But be that it may, as it may, the logic here is very compelling since it's Tevel, and there's no way you could eat it on Shabbos because Hafrosh's Trumas of Maestros was prohibited me from Shavuos on Yotam and Shabbos. Therefore, it has the din of Mukt, and the Mishnah wants to tell me this Chiddush. That for the sake of Kadayai and Kadayai Shema, which are Mukta, you're nevertheless allowed to move that which you need to cover them to protect them from the rains. And on the contrary, that which was a Kash on Ula, in, this, in light of this new interpretation, becomes a Raya, a support text to Ula. And Hachina Mistabad, Isaac, the Dait of Kadayai and Kadayai Shema, they're Tera. If you're going to tell me that they're not Tevel, is Hatani Le Reisha Peros. Why would the Mishnah feel compelled to add another example of Kadi Yai and Kadi Shemin to Peros? I mean, it's the, they're identical. It's, this whole Mishnah becomes redundant. But rather, the Chiddush is to tell you that even though they're Tevel and they're Mukta, nevertheless, we reject Rabbi Yitzhak in favor of Rabbi, Ze- Rabbi uh, uh, in favor of Ula that we are allowed to be metaltel for the sake of a Dover Chain Onita. The Gemara rejects this. The Mishnah felt compelled to add the case of Kadi Yai and Kadi Shem, not because they're devil and not because they're Mukta, but for a different reason. I mean, I would have thought if not for this Mishnah. In the case of Peros, when they get drenched by the rains, you're going to take a very severe financial loss. And therefore, we were make ill and we allowed you to do whatever you have to do. But in the case of Kadi Yain, Kadi Shemen, which are basically barreled in and protected, there, there's a very small and limited financial loss that would be suffered in Ifka Mash Malon, the Chiddush is, that we were lenient and we allowed covering Kadi Yain, Kadi Shemen, even to protect the owner from a very slim and limited financial loss. Now we have a kasha on Rabbi Yitzhak from a Mishnah. Our Mishnah. We're allowed to put a utensil under the waters on shops to receive in that receptacle those waters, because those waters are, are dirty waters that would pollute the entire house. And the Delef, the Delef itself, is also the tiltal. It's not royal Shum Chimuch. What are you going to do with it? And now we're saying that you're allowed to put a Kli underneath a Delef. Delef itself is Muktza. You see that you're allowed to move a Kli for the purpose of Muktza. Our answer is with Delif Roy, that there are things that you could do and use with Delif. Maybe you wouldn't drink it, but you know what? Maybe you'd feed it to your animals, and therefore it's mutter betilt. Gemara asks now a catch on Rabbi Yitzchak from a brisa toshma. We learned in a brisa parts in Machzeles al Gabi Levena b'Shabbos. Here explicitly it says you're allowed to move a mat in order to cover over. Levanim bricks, even though these Levanim are designated for building purposes, and therefore they're also metaltal and mukta. So you see, you're allowed to be metaltal machteles for the purpose of mukta. 
And the Gemara defends Rabbi Yitzchak by saying the Aisur mi binyana. These are bricks that are no longer designated for building purposes, for construction, because he already constructed his building. And this, these are the leftovers from the construction. And what would you do with them? We're going to allow people to use it as a kind of a chair and sit on it or lean on it. And the reason for that is since it's no longer designated for the building, the building, the construction is already completed. I could be more careless, so to speak, about these levatim. I don't have to be so careful about them. I can sit on them. And if that be the case, they are no longer mukta. And you could be metaltal and machzelis for that purpose because it's royally yeshiva. Toshma, another cash on Rabbi Yitzchak from a different price. Orson, machzelis al gabi avon and b'shabes. You're allowed to cover stones on Shabbos with a mat in order to protect these stones, which probably have a certain value to them, from the rainwater. But we see clearly that even those these stones have a value, meaning they, you can use them like Avne Yushalayim, which we use for building purposes. Nevertheless, you're allowed to take a machzeles or a beged or a kli, and you're allowed to protect the avonim. So we see against Rebbe Yitzhak, you're allowed to cover something which in and of itself is mukta. Now, I have to add one comment over here. It's my own, my own comment. And that is that apparently these havonim cannot be suitable for sitting, like we said before in the case of Levanim. And the reason for that is because Levanim were the spare Levanim after the construction was complete, and that were allowing you to sit on. But these stones are designated for building purposes, and you haven't yet built the, the, the structure yet. So that for sure is mukta. And the Gemara comes up with a whole new interpretation of Avonim in order to defend Rabbi Yitzchak. Avonim mikurzolos. In those days, they didn't have toilet paper, pardon the expression the way we have it today. They had Avonim mikurzolos. These were stones that were shaped in a certain way, like a triangle. And they had a certain point, which would clean up the anus from the death, from the feces. And chazin lebeis hakise. And then amukta. We designate them on Erev Shabbos, like cutting toilet paper on Erev Shabbos. And therefore, you'll have to be metal to the machzelis in order to protect these avonim mikorzolos. Toshma, another kasha, another objection against Rabbi Yitzchak from Abraisa. Parsim machzelis al gabi kaveres dvorim b'chabbos. You have a beehive. Uh, we have honeycombs inside the beehives. And this is a whole big business, you know, to sell honey from the bees. And on Shabbos, let's say during the winter months, when it's very rainy, we need to protect this kaveres. And we're going to allow you to, to cover it with a machzelis. For example, during the summer months, we want to cover this beehive for a different reason, because the sun during the summer months is beating down and the heat of the sun could really destroy your beehive. During the winter, because of the Geshem. There's one proviso. We're not going to allow you to cover it if you intend to capture any of those bees, because that would be a violation of Meleches Seda, which is one of the 39 Melechas. But in any event, you see clearly that even though the Kaveris itself and the dvorim inside, right? The bees inside are all mukta. They're also the tiltal, and yet we're allowing you to take a machzelas, a mat, and cover over the kaveres, this beehive, against Rabbi Yitzchak. The Gemara defends Rabbi Yitzchak, says, Hosad nami di ikad vash. This beehive has two elements to it. It's got a, the hive itself, and it has honeycombs in it with vash. There's honey inside this kaveres. The honey itself is mutabitilta. And therefore, even Rabbi Yitzhak would allow you to cover this kaveres for the sake of protecting the dvash, so that the dvash inside will not get ruined. Amalei Rav Ukva mi I don't know, that's a, probably a city in Bavel. 
And it's true, I admit, that during the summer months, there is dvash in the, in the kaveras, but during the winter months, there's not dvash. I mean, it's not much. We don't usually find honey in the combs during the winter months. I guess the dvarim are off-duty, they're hibernating. The Gemara answers, Lo nitzucha ela osan shtei chalas. When the professional honey producers would take care of their, their, their um, beehives, during the winter months, they would make sure to leave, after they took all the dvash out, two chalos of dvash, two honeycombs of dvash. And that was to leave food for the bees during the winter months. And those two chalos are mutabitiltu, they're roi lachila, even during the Yemos HaKashamim. And hence, we allow you, even during Yemos HaKashamim, to cover your honeycombs and protect the honey in these two chalos of honey. So when I ask the question, Osan Shtei Chalos Muktasen, what is, what is the dvash designated for? The, this honey is not designated for human consumption. It's, de, it's designated for the bees. And if they're designated as food for the bees, to feed the bees during the winter months, then they're also betiltal. Going into Shabbos, he made a decision that he might want to use the honey in this beehive on his table for Michael Adam, and then it becomes Muchan and it's not Mukt. Now, the question that bothers my mind is what, what good is designating them for Achilles Adam on Erev Shabbos? We don't allow you to remove the honey from its combs. Which is called in the Lachan Ashas, Ridias Hakaveres. Ridias Hakaveres is prohibited. In fact, the Gemara Chabbat's quotes Rabbi Eliezer Sheep on Daftari Hey that he's Chayv Chatas for such thing, but at least the Rabbanan agree that it's also mid Rabbanan. So you're going to have to say that we're talking about Vash that's Saf al Hachalos, that don't need Ridu. They're sort of floating on top of the cones. Now the Gemara asks, let's take a look. Let's look at this Mishnah and ask, at this Bryce, excuse me, and ask the following question. By implication, you're telling me that if he didn't designate it on Erev Shabbos, then it would be also the Tiltal, and you would not be allowed to take a mat and cover the beehives. Is Adetani, what about the safe of this price? That's looking for a case that's Asur. And he says, make sure that you don't have Kavana when you cover the Kaveras. But say that's Advarim. Why did Gemara have to stretch its, out, stretch its arm out, the Brysa, to the case of Tseda? Liflog Velisni, but he died. He didn't have to introduce the whole issue of Tseda with regard to the Dvarim. He could have just said, when do we allow you to take the machzelas and cover the chalos that's only shechish of aleim when he designated for achilas adam on erev Shabbos? Have a low teach of aleim also. If he didn't prepare it, then you're not allowed to take a machzelas because of the principle of Rabbi Yitzchak. The Gemara answers, Hachi Kamar Afal Pi Shechish of Aleim, who bevad shelo yiskavin lotzu. Even if there's no issue of muktza because it was chishev aleim, nevertheless, we still have to give you a limitation, a restriction. Make sure that you're not interested in seder. Now the Gemara says the following: You're interpreting this brisa in 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 the context of Rabbi Yehuda Shita, but why you came to Rabbi Yehuda this like muktza? And the entire issue about whether or not you're you're allowed to move the machzeles for covering the kaveris, all revolves around muktza. You have shtei chalos, and therefore it's not muktza. So now the question is, 
if you're really pushing the the uh, the envelope that this brisa reflects the shita of Reb Yehuda, he must say for look at the say for the brisa who eventually is coming lots of shouldn't have kavana for tzeda asal le Rebbe Shimon the Amad Dovish Shadim is coming. This distinction as far as tzeda as to whether or not you had kavana and if it's also or you didn't have kavana only makes sense. According to Rabbi Shimon, who holds Dovah Shainim is Kavin is Muta. But if you hold like Rabbi Yehud, that Dovah Shainim is Kavin is Osur, then what difference does it make whether you have come on a Lotzud or you don't have come on a Lotzud? If you're doing it, say that it's going to be Osur in all of it. So the Gemara says, with Tizbara, and your logic is bringing you to that conclusion, the Rabbi, the, the Rabbi Shimon, that Rabbi Shimon here in this case, would permit kisu of kaveres if he doesn't have kavona for tzeda because of dover shenim is coming. Wait a second, Omar Abaye Varova damaged Abaye Moder of Chim Sikrechlo Yomus. If we know bevadai for sure that by covering the kaveres, there's no question about the fact that he will be so they'll be tzedas dvorim. Then even Reb Shimon would agree that it's us. Awesome. So how could the price of be matir kisu kaveres? Bill Vachel is coming. It's a psigracha. It's going to definitely happen. Now the Gemara goes back to its original understanding. The Olam, we're going to go back and say that we're not reflecting the sheet of Rabbi Shimon. Kula, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yehudin. The entire Brisa from beginning to end reflects the opinion of Rabbi Yehudin. The Valchamai Askinon, the Isle, the Isle Kave. The reason why there is no tzeda here, according to Rabbi Yehuda, even in a case where he's not miscaving for tzeda, there should be an isa tzeda, is because it has chalonos. And there are openings in the sides of this kaveres through which the devorim can fly out to freedom. So there's no tzeda over here. Below table of Rabbi Yehuda, then now you could cross out Going to Rabbi Yehuda, those words in the Brayso, Bilvad Shlo is coming Lotzud, and we're, take, we're taking that out of the out of the Girsah. 